like many of you, I'm online a lot. More often than not, you could find me looking at inspiration for my art on Pinterest or scrolling through reels on Instagram all the time, every day. Well, very recently, I was scrolling through my reels and I kept seeing videos promoting a brand called Drunk Elephant. And if you're unfamiliar with their products, they are a skincare line catered toward older, more mature skin, so adults, right? So you can imagine my surprise when I kept seeing young girls as young as seven years old showcasing their extensive skincare product line, even though they didn't really want to have it. And I felt kind of sad because it was strange to see girls much younger than me caring about products that they didn't really need or want or treating them like toys even though they're really expensive. It made me think about my own childhood, about how I used to ask my parents to buy me these really cute graphic tees at the mall, even though they were actually really obnoxious looking. I thought about how I used to make rubber band bracelets to give to my friends at school. And that made me think about my baby cousin, Isabella. And I actually have yet to meet her, but I'm really excited to watch her grow up and experience the world but I'm also terrified for her future and how she's going to face so many struggles in life, how she is going to feel embarrassed about things, and how different her preteen years will be compared to my own. We often refer to preteens as tweens, children between the ages of nine and 12. We often look back at these years and cringe at ourselves because we were kind of embarrassing. We looked up to older people like YouTubers we watched, characters and TV shows we liked, or our older siblings and cousins. We tried to emulate them, try to mimic what made them larger than life to us, like their clothing, their slang. But now we're at a point in our lives where social media plays such an important factor in our upbringing, and it's a constant presence which makes it a lot easier for tweens to absorb and mimic people in their 20s and 30s. Insecurities like acne are hidden behind filters and makeup, and overall it's just harder for kids to act their age. If whether they're aware of it or not, they're maturing much faster than any other generation, spending the most carefree years of their lives putting on a persona far beyond their years. But why is that? Well, it starts with the evolution of social media and the transition to mostly digital entertainment, physically tangible pieces of media like magazines or books, detailing health, hygiene, emotional topics like our insecurities or our crushes or our general angst are mostly online. They were safe spaces to learn and recognized our interests and our problems. The homogenization of media as well, otherwise known as the mix of content for different ages like teens and adults on the same platform uh, that tweens use, like Instagram, Snapchat, or Twitter, puts them at risk. We've erased safe spaces for them, specifically catered for tweens, and grouped them with other ages, which pressures them to compare their own bodies, their clothing, or their own personal experiences to people who are much older than them and who have much different lives. Let's also consider how we treat young girls and their interests. Society prides on making humor for people to cope with other things and often exploits vulnerability. You can often find posts making fun of girls and making ruthless commentary on stereotypes against them. Because let's face it, right? If a girl wears Uggs and drinks iced coffee, she's basic. If a girl likes following fashion trends that she really likes, she's a poser. If she likes boy bands and freaks out over the members, she's a mindless groupie. Whatever a girl does, she's going to be ridiculed and shamed for it. And a lot of this stems from the blur between media that portrays and pushes unrealistic expectations. 
There is an erasure of content towards tweens that draws them to media intended for older audiences, like, for example, Euphoria. It's a drama that depicts unrealistic expectations and over-sexualization of female characters, as well as portraying topics like addiction, toxic relationships, and domestic violence. And I do think that it is important to talk about these topics at some point and to learn about them, but right now, teen dramas are pushing darker topics onto a younger audience than intended. And why do we shame young girls for being themselves? Not only does this develop internalized misogynistic feelings about themselves or self-loathing behavior, but it also allows for young boys to feel the same way, to perceive and treat women badly, disrespect them and objectify them. It allows them to internalize unhealthy expectations for women through things like gross podcasts or comedies or anime. By pushing these unrealistic expectations and introducing young girls to them without regulation or acknowledgement, we are causing the disappearance of the tween era, which causes both young boys and young girls to experience adult things earlier, significantly impacting their mental health. Many studies have shown that on an average between 17,000 girls, the majority of them have started experiencing puberty at around age 10. The year after, the age dropped to an average of age nine. And every decade, the age of puberty shortens by three months. Tween girls are at higher risk of depression, anxiety, substance abuse, and other psychological problems compared to peers that experience puberty at a later time. So they are extremely vulnerable, and it's important that we guide them without shaming them. So how do we fix this? Well, first of all, we need to bring back age-appropriate media or media that also addresses important topics like loss, identity, cultural understanding, and emotional maturity because I think that there is a middle ground possible for media. We should be urging artists, actors, directors, writers to use their resources and pursue more projects that are used to help influence kids and aim, aiming themselves to better a generation without underestimating or belittling their age, their capabilities, or their intelligence. Like the Babysitter's Club on Netflix, it centers around ideas of female friendship, loss, cultural identity, dealing with divorce and feeling out of place, and depicts every character in a loving and endearing manner without shaming them for not having the answers to everything. Let's also support safe spaces online, like magazines or media or social media accounts directed solely for tweens. And I understand this part of it is really subjective and I'm not saying that we should be restricting tweens from exploring the world around them or regulating what they see or watch because that kind of restriction is unhealthy and in my own experience, it's really stressful to deal with and it doesn't fulfill the learning and knowledge that we crave. We just need to introduce and reinforce good and honest media, which is not necessarily a job for us, but also a job for our parents. I think it's their responsibility in their kids' lives to support and acknowledge their interests and what they're passionate about, support their growth without shaming or embarrassing them or punishing them for being curious about many things in life. We should also stop shaming young girls for their interests because we think it's so easy to call it obnoxious and be so negative about it, but don't make fun of people for their interests and passions if they're not hurting anyone. Because we've created and supported a culture in which girls are targeted and in which girls are also targeting other girls. There is no need to pull others down for the benefit of ourselves. Because in the end, all of us are vulnerable to low self-esteem, which can stem from places like our family or our friends and it's important to normalize being open about these things because we can be a better positive influence to a younger generation by sharing how 
not everything is picture perfect like it is on social media, and that the issues we face when we're growing up are natural. So take the time in your day to self-reflect. Think about your words and your actions. Try to maintain a balanced diet or get more sleep. Because when you make yourself a priority, you're projecting to other people that you matter and that you think you matter. And in time, they will feel the same way about themselves. And surround yourself with good people who embrace and share your interests. I think again about Isabella. I haven't met her yet again, but I love her just the same. And I know that she is going to grow up in an environment that changes every day. And I'm worried about how she's going to deal with emotional and physical struggles growing up. About how she's going to face expectations that are set unfairly against her. And if she ends up anything like me, she's going to hide the pain and all of her concerns from the people who really care about her. And I feel like it's the same for many of you and your younger siblings or other kids that you're around. But whether you like it or not, you are a role model for the younger generation. So by promoting positive influences and cultivating supportive environments, we can empower young girls to feel safe and embrace their identities and navigate the challenges of growing up and figuring out who they are with confidence and resilience and at their own pace. It's time to revive the tween era and create a happier, safer future for the next generation. Thank you.